All right, so with that, let's get into our motivating example, Simpson's Paradox. Say that in a purely hypothetical scenario, there is a new disease, COVID-27. And there are two treatments for the disease, A and B, which we'll code as 0 and 1. And it's your job to decide which treatment to choose for your country. And the only thing you care about is minimizing death. So which treatment will cause the smallest number of people to die or uh, will help the largest number of people live? And an important thing about these two treatments that we will use in this uh, example is that treatment B is much more scarce than treatment A. Another thing that you have data on, so you're getting data just from your doctors in your country, they're administering treatments, and then they're collecting data on what happens when they give those treatments. Another thing that you have data on is the condition of each patient, whether they come in with a mild condition or a severe condition, which will also go to zero or one. And then finally, there's the outcome, why your patients will either be alive or dead. And in all of these cases, we're only looking at binary variables, but in general, there's a theme in causal inference where you can extend analysis from binary variables to, say, continuous variables or uh, multiple outcomes, say. So here is what your data looks like at the treatment level. Among people who were given treatment A, 16% of them died. So that's 240 people out of 1,500. 1,500 people got treatment A, and 240 of them died. And then among people who got treatment B, 19% of them died. So just, just looking at this, it seems like treatment A is doing a bit better than treatment B. You know, 3% fewer people die. But then something interesting happens when you subgroup the data by condition. So if you look at patients who have mild condition, 15% of those who are given treatment A die, compared to only 10% of those who are given treatment B. So treatment B actually looks better among the patients who had mild condition. And it's the same thing with patients who have the severe condition, actually. You have only 20% mortality rate, only 20% of people died when they, um, of people who had severe condition and received treatment B, whereas a larger 30% of people who had severe condition and received treatment A died. So how is, um, how are these numbers flipped? In some sense, there's a paradox in that if you look at the total population, you ignore the subgroups, treatment A has a lower number. Treatment A looks better. But then when you look at each of the subgroups, treatment B looks better in both subgroups. This is, uh, this is Simpson's paradox. And it turns out that the numbers work out just fine. You know, the way that you get these numbers, say the 16%, the 240 is just summing up the numerators of the treatment A mild group and the treatment A severe group. And then the 1,500 is just summing up the denominators, 1,400 plus 100. A maybe more interesting way of writing these calculations is to, uh, so here I've massaged the calculation a bit so that I've written in terms of weightings of the big numbers in the boxes. So this 0.15 here is the 15%, same with the 0.3 and so on. And so I've rewritten this as weightings. The... 0.15 is weighted much larger than the 0.3 for the treatment A calculation. And this is just because most of the people who received treatment A had mild condition, 1,400 out of 1,500. So the 16% number that you see in the total population for treatment A is largely coming from the big weight that was put on the 15% among the mild condition people. In contrast, for treatment B, there was a much bigger weight placed on the severe group. And that's just because 500 out of 550 people who received treatment B had severe condition. And so the 19% the that you see for the treatment B in the total population is largely coming from the 20% that you see in the 
severe group for treatment B. Simpson's paradox largely comes from this unequal weighting, okay, from the fact that the treatment A people mostly had mild condition and the treatment B people had mostly had severe condition, and people with severe condition are just more likely to die than people with mild condition. So that's why we see these flipping of the numbers. But, you know, I've kind of explained why we have the flipping of the numbers, but the question still remains, which treatment should you choose? So hold that question in your head a bit, see if you can come up with your answer to it. The spoiler is that, as I'll show you in the next few slides, the answer to this question largely depends on the causal structure of the problem. So in scenario one, um, where the causal graph is that the condition is a cause of the treatment, and also the treatment and the condition are causes of the outcome. But importantly, the condition is a cause of the treatment. In this scenario, generally, treatment B is the better choice. And I'll give you a specific example to help illustrate uh, the intuition for why this is the case. So the important thing to remember is that condition is a cause of the treatment. The example is that, say a doctor sees someone come in who has a mild condition. The doctor might then decide, for most of those people, to assign them treatment A because they want to save the more scarce treatment, treatment B, for people with more severe condition, people who are more likely to die, say. And this is why we see that among people who had mild condition, 1,400 out of 1,450 of them were assigned treatment A. Similarly, if someone comes in with severe condition, the doctor might be more likely to prescribe that person treatment B, thinking, okay, this person has severe condition, it's worth it to give them the more scarce treatment. And this is why we see that among people who have severe condition, 500 out of 600 of them were assigned treatment B. So most of them got treatment B. Okay, so in this scenario, why is treatment B preferred? Treatment B is preferred because the reason that we are getting these, this large 19% um, mortality rate among treatment B people is mainly because treatment B is disproportionately being assigned to people with severe condition who have higher chance of dying. Similarly, treatment A is disproportionately being assigned to people um, with mild condition who have a lower chance of dying. So the correct numbers to look at are the subgroup numbers, the ones in the mild and severe column. And so that's why treatment B should be preferred in this scenario, when you have condition as a cause of treatment. Now, in scenario two, the main conceptual difference is that treatment is now a cause of condition. Everything else in the causal graph is the same. Treatment and condition are still causes of the outcome. Why? Okay, and in this causal graph, treatment A is actually preferred. So I'll give you an example again to kind of illustrate the in intuition of this. So the example is that, say you're prescribed treatment B. You might have to wait a long time to actually take treatment B because it's rather scarce. And in that time while you are waiting, your condition could worsen. So say you come in with a mild condition, your condition could worsen to a severe one. That's why we see that among people who were prescribed treatment B, 500 out of 550 of them had severe condition. You know, it could have been that many of them transitioned from the treatment group, or sorry, from the mild condition to severe condition. In this example that I'm giving, it's different from the example in the previous slide. All right, so, you know, that's how treatment B could cause, could be a cause of your condition. But say you're assigned treatment A. Similarly, because treatment A is abundant, unlike treatment B, you don't have to wait at all. And so if you come in with a mild condition, you will have a mild condition probably at the time that you actually take the treatment. And that's why we see out of the 1,500 people who were assigned treatment A, 1,400 of them had mild condition. Of the 100 that severe condition, probably none 
transitioned from the mild condition while they were waiting. It's probably mostly just that those ones came in with severe condition. Okay, so the reason that we prefer treatment A in this setting is that the treatment is actually causing people to have a worse condition if you're given treatment B. If you're given treatment A, it's causing people to have, you know, the same condition. But so the treatment has an effect on your condition, which then has an effect on your probability of dying. So there's this effect that's going through your condition that we have to take into account. And the, uh, the way to take that in account is to look at these total numbers. So the thing to keep in mind is that treatment B is kind of bad in this example because it causes you to have a worse condition. So in this scenario, we would prefer treatment A. All right, and that concludes the uh, motivating example. So that's Simpson's paradox. A quick recap is that we prefer treatment B when the condition is a cause of treatment in this, that graph, and we prefer treatment A when the treatment is a cause of condition. So you have to decide which treatment to give your whole country. It's an important issue. It will, um, it will decide the lives of many people. And the decision hinges crucially on the causal structure of the problem. 